already seen this before. and this is Geometry and Topology Today, and today we're here with Aaron Lauda, who's from University of Southern California, and he's going to talk to us today about converting algebra into pictures. Aaron, show us what this was all about. Well, this may look like a strange calculation, but if you replace a dot by just an ordinary variable like you might see in algebra, then you can translate this equation that I've drawn on the board into the following one, which you might have seen in an algebra class. So two dots. Two, two dots points. now will correspond to x squared. Got it. Uh, a single dot will just be x, and if we have no dots, that's just having, we'll just count that as a minus two. So that's the that's number of dots on our strings is corresponding to how many times we multiply x. So in this problem, I've tried to take these pictures and multiply it by this one, two x, because we have just a single dot. Now using the same ordinary rules you see in algebra about how you distribute this uh, over the other guys as you multiply, this algebraic, when you try and solve this, or uh, compute what this is, yep. you get 2x cubed, 10x, and if you watch with the pictures, when I multiply this by this, I got three dots, because in, in terms of pictures, all I did was stack this one on top and multiply the coefficients. So for the second one, I took this dot, I stacked it on top and got 2, and my coefficient here was 2, and my coefficient here was 5, so I multiplied those together. And you but, in, yeah, and I, let me just finish the calculation here, minus 4x. Well, this is uh, 10 x squared, right? Of course. <laughs> there you go. So, so no, it's all right. <laughs> it's perfectly okay. <laughs> Look, so, so uh, um, this is just a pictorial representation of what you're doing what we're doing when we multiply two polynomials together. Well, okay, so now um, this is not, you know, you don't, you, I, I take it that you don't spend a lot of time uh, computing polynomials. How, how do you uh, jazz this up to well, do something that's uh, um, much more like what a mathematician would do? Well, what, this is just meant to illustrate um, how you might take an algebraic equation like this or expression and rules for how you combine algebra and convert them into more intuitive uh, pictures, where you sort of take these pictures and stack them on top of each other. Can you show us an example of a more complicated picture? Sure. So in the pictures that I think about, there's extra kinds of pictures, and in fact, you even have extra kinds of colors. So we have more than just this orange color. We have a purple, and um, what you might consider is... We can erase. Oh, sure. Let's just do that quickly. So for example, I might take a picture that looks like this, maybe with uh, two purple dots and uh, maybe a, a red line. And I might try and ask myself how to multiply this picture by another picture, say, Now my rules here, as we said before, was that I took the picture on the right and I stacked it on top of the picture on the left. And it only works with the when the colors at the bottom all match with the colors here. I see. So in this case, when I multiply these two pictures by each other, I would get something that looks like uh, this picture is the start, but then I stack this picture on top. So down here I did two purple dots. And what happened down here was, first I did this orange line, and then I moved this guy across. And now down here, here, this is going to be uh, just yes. a single line with a dot. With a dot, that's right. And the pictures can get more complicated. In general, I mean, this was sort of a simple one, but in general, some picture that I might consider would have you know, any kind of winding strings. I even allow the pictures eventually to have curls, and you can have bubbles floating around. And these strings are interacting in complex ways according to some fixed rules about how you move the pictures around. All the pictures can have little dots. And these are the types of objects that I would be studying, manipulating them using a fixed set of rules. In other words, you, 
So instead of working with the algebra, that, that, so what would this look like maybe in, in, in the... Yeah, it's actually a little bit ugly because <laughs> when I start to convert a picture like this into algebra, um, I have to actually keep track of all the colors at the bottom. So that's the first problem is that... Should we, should we write it down here? Yeah, sure. So um, I might write a little... I have to write, introduce an, uh, a way of keeping track of what my colors are at the bottom. So I might have to introduce a, an element that looks like this, where I have, I have to keep track of what are my colors at the bottom. And then, <laughs> in this case, what I'm doing is I am putting some generate or some element which is crossing the first two. So I have a name for that. I call it a psi, a Greek symbol psi. And here, the dots, as we saw before, were just our polynomial generate, our polynomials. So this would be something like x squared. So the psi x squared would be corresponding to this. And I have to be a little careful because you can imagine that I can stick a crossing on any of those, of those slots. So I put a 1 here to tell me that I'm crossing the first and the second string. Got it. And I put a 3 over here to tell me that I'm putting dots on the third string. So this, this element here would just look something like, like this picture down here. And then you can, and then once you do this... Yeah, exactly. So now I want to multiply this by the element Again, I have a crossing, so I would draw a psi on the first string. The, the, nothing's happening here, so I don't need to write anything. Got it. And then the last, the fourth string, we're putting a dot on. And then again, I have to keep track because this this. Uh, you you, you want to you want to say what are the bottom? Right, because the, these pictures, with. I can only multiply the pictures when the colors match up. If the colors don't work, exactly. then we then it's a, it's by definition zero. So we don't we only are allowed to stack pictures when the colors. Agree, and again, I'm writing down the colors at the bottom. We have a lot of markers here when you do calculations, <laughs> right? So this calculation, when I multiply it, I would get, um, in this case, that I'm doing two crossings. So I would do psi one squared, and I would have this third string is getting two dots, and the fourth string is getting one dot, and my color at the bottom is. This one here, one, and then yes. The orange there. And then. So obviously, uh, this could get pretty nasty pretty quickly, and so it's really helpful to be able to translate uh, this kind of very complicated uh, set of, um, uh, of arithmetic or algebra into the pictures where you can just kind of visually see what's Absolutely. Happening. I mean, if you can imagine, you know, we just took some very simple pictures here. Right. Imagine if I tried to convert this picture into expression like this, it would be this enormous mess. And then the idea is that we actually want to do calculations of similar sort of things like how we multiply polynomials and maybe simplify them out into pieces. We want to take the pictures and simplify them into the basic pieces and uh, using yeah. the rules you know, using rules like this would, would just very quickly become tiresome. So what we do is we actually uh, translate our algebraic equations into these pictures so that now if I look at that picture, I might think about, well, how can I simplify this? You know, if I could slide this orange string past that blue, that purple string, Got it. then I could maybe simplify, pull out that curly cube. There's rules for doing each of these steps. And, um, and rather than doing algebraic, I'm just... Playing you're, with you're, pictures. You're playing with pictures. You're playing with pictures. Yeah. Oh, so, so, <laughs> so, is that what you do all day? Is just play with pictures? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is what I tell to is play with these pictures. <laughs> so if you come into my office, my chalkboard is filled with these things. <laughs> filled with the pictures. That's but true. of course, the, the pictures, the pictures have to be uh, solving. You know, you, you they're not. USC is not just paying you to, to, to draw pictures all day. No, don't tell anyone. <laughs> so, no. so, so, uh, tell our viewers, you know, kind of sure. where does this, where, where does a problem like this um, manifest itself in in um, in the real world? So, I actually started playing with these pictures because I was interested in uh, what's called quantum gravity. So, this is where you're trying to combine. Um, quantum mechanics, which describes the very small things, it's the reason why we can have iPhones that are so small and in our pockets, with Einstein's theory of general relativity, which describes planetary motions and um, you know, orbits of planets and things like that. It turns out when you try and combine these two theories, it's incredibly difficult. And even developing the mathematical tools for 
having such a theory is a huge open problem. Yeah. Involves working with with lots of variables and lots of relations. Exactly, lots the equations, equations involved become so complex that it's it's actually you know incredibly challenging to even you know, work with. Them. Write them down. So so then it becomes advantageous to right. So that was really the, those uh, equations uh, and those expressions into pictures. Absolutely. Yeah. And then and then be able to solve the. That's right. So by somehow taking these very complex equations that we're that we're seeing and translating them into these pictures, we're able to use our sort of more uh, human intuition about you know playing with pictures and, and a game that's a little more fun than, than this game down at the bottom. Wait, uh, wait. So you you're just saying that that mathematicians try to, to convert hard problems into fun problems. Absolutely. <laughs> Who wants to do it? <laughs> yeah, when you go to work, you try and do it the, the most fun it, way you can. <laughs> doing it this way, you sit there and scratch your head, whereas doing it this way, you... I do, I do feel like I have the best job in the world. I get to go into work and, and play this game all day. So. <laughs> but it's a game that comes out of something very That's important. That's right, yeah. yeah. Ah, well, um, so, so thank you so much. Uh, let's, I, I want to ask you a couple more questions. Sure, absolutely. And um, there... The first one I want to ask you is, uh, what was it like? Can you can you can you tell us the uh, just ex describe what it was like the moment that you solved your first kind of major uh, result? Absolutely. So for I spent quite a lot of time working with a collaborator in uh, New York, and we were really basically you, I've been telling you the story where we're using these pictures and moving the them around according to some rules. But originally, because we were working with the, the actual algebraic expressions in the very beginning, it was incredibly hard to figure out what the rules for this game were. <laughs> so we were trying to play the game, but figuring out what the rules were for how to move the pictures was... How to, what would happen if you did slide this picture? That's right, yeah. So exactly like, what are the rules, what kinds of pictures show up? It's not as simple as just sliding the orange and the purple string. Something right. else happens to the pictures as you do that. And just figuring out what the set of rules was, had, I had been stuck for uh, three months just really trying the same thing. Three, just, wait, three months? <laughs> yes. Okay, <laughs> viewers. <laughs> Look, uh, the next time that you have a problem that takes you more than 10 minutes, <laughs> Aaron has spent three months trying to figure out the, the problem, this problem. That's right. right yeah. So, what well, was that like? Where I shouldn't you? feel bad because the problem had been uh, proposed over 15 years ago and it hadn't been solved, solved since then. So, I don't feel as bad that it took me three months since it was open. <laughs> but um, basically, I was sitting in a desk in uh, Toronto. Uh, I was at an institute there for mathematics. Oh, yeah. And it was in the wintertime, so it was it was completely covered in snow outside. There was I wasn't in a big hurry to go outside, so I just spent the entire, you know, the months in my office. And I just, you know, it was sort of an empty, it was a quiet time. So just sitting in my office and kept trying new ideas, trying new ways of thinking about it. And finally I had this breakthrough where I, I realized I had been making a faulty assumption the whole time. And by removing that assumption, uh, and everything just started everything to fall. Started to fall. I, was so, I was sort of jumped in the air and was, you know, and dancing around and no one was around. <laughs> <laughs> I was sort of in my office uh, by myself jumping around. But it was, it was pretty exciting. And uh, it's been a lot of fun since we found the rules. We can do a lot of stuff with it. You can it applies to a lot more than just these pictures. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, we were sort of motivated by these connections with uh, physics, and uh, we're still working on developing those, but already with mathematics, we've uncovered a, a huge amount of um, interesting structures and, and proven new theorems using these, these rules. Fantastic. Well, Aaron, thank you so Thanks much. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. And I appreciate it, and thank you for watching. And uh, Aaron's got some great a lot more pictures like this at his website, and we'll, we'll give you a link at the bottom of this. Uh, um, thank you.